So I'd like to run through our example of um, how to put all that correlation information together. Now you'll notice that we could do the six steps to inferential statistics to see, you know, is there a relationship and there's not a relationship and we could see if it's in the rejection region. However, moving forward, I feel like it would be more useful for us to do some basic interpretation of the correlation and then learn how to really make the data useful with the regression. Regression comes after correlation and it has mon much more we can sink our teeth into. So rather than doing all six steps for a correlation, we're going to do very basic interpretation for correlation and then we're going to spend more time with regression making the data more useful for us. But let's say that we had this data set where we're looking at the hours studied on the test and the test score. We can see that the scores range from 0 to 100 and the hours range from 0 to 30. We just ran that data in JASP. If you haven't checked out that video, go ahead and look for that. And I showed you how to click through in JASP to get our data or our analysis, and we found that our correlation was 0 0.707. And so there's two things we can take away from that. First of all, we know that it was a significant relationship because the p-value was less than 0 0.05. And a, we also know that a correlation of 0 0.707 is, is quite strong. We also can take away that it's a positive relationship because it said it was 0 0.707 which is positive, otherwise I would have said a negative 0 0.707. Since it is a positive relationship, I now know that the more hours someone studies predicts higher test score, right? So more hours, more points. That's very useful. If it were a negative correlation, it would say more hours, less test points. So we want to make sure that you can say at the end of the day what the interpretation would be. And so positive correlations would be more and more, negative correlations would be more and less. So since this was a po positive correlation, we say more hours, more test points, or another way of saying that would be higher grade. We can then also go one step further and turn it into the coefficient of determination. So if I take 0 0.707 and I square it, I get 0.50. Then I can put that into that magic sentence that I love for the coefficient of determination. And that says that 50% of the variability in test scores is associated with the variability in hours studied. So what I want to point out is that this sentence pretty much stays the same except the variable names. So our y variable or outcome variable always is listed first in the sentence followed by the x variable. So here it's 50% of the variability in test scores is associated with the variability in hours studied. So there's lots of things that will go into why you would get a good test score or a poor test score. Maybe how distracted you were, if you felt sick, if you had lots of stressors going on. But this is saying that the number of hours you study is related to about 50% of the variability in test scores. So it's, it's useful for me to know how many hours you studied if I'm trying to predict what your test score will be. So this is the kind of um, interpretations we're going to make with correlation at this moment. And then next week we're going to learn about regression and we'll turn it into even more useful information.